In this video we will make a range of ballast from quick and easy to standard and to very advanced cobblestone and concrete surfaces. Hello and welcome to another video tutorial. In this video tutorial we're gonna do a ballasting marathon. <laughs> Yeah, I have over the years um, made uh, a range of different ballasting, like uh, concrete ballasting, uh, ordinary ballasting, and ballasting sidings, you know, with grass, overgrown with grass. So I'm, I'm, I'm putting all of these together in one tutorial here, adding also cobblestone ballasting. So let's go! First action is to glue the track bed in place. To do that I use a water-based wood glue. It's sometimes also referred to as white glue. For this project I use a track bed from Woodland Senex. It's called ST1474. I fix it with pins temporarily until the glue has set. And I check with my pieces of track so I haven't done any bigger mistakes now. In this project I'm using Merklin K-Track and it has connectors under the tracks, here. I prefer to solder these connectors ahead of assembly since we will soak more or less the track into water and glue mix. At this time I also solder the electrical connections to the track if necessary. Ok, then it's time for assembly. I use the same type of wood glue also to assemble the track onto the track bed. Smoothen the glue using a paintbrush. And as you see the green wire here, I've already made the necessary connections to this track section ahead of assembly. I'm checking so I have the tracks straight, putting a steel scale next to it. Then put the steel case on top and some weights and let this dry now. The easiest way to ballast currently is to use process baluster. This ballasting device works just as well on a two rail system as a three rail system which we have here. The ballast I'm using is Woodland Scenic Medium Buff. I find that to have a very nice size for HO scale purposes. It's also available in a brown color if you prefer that. With the ballast in place all you need to do is to knock a bit on the rail. The vibration will compress the ballast in between the ties and then it's easy as a breeze just to vacuum away the excess ballast lying on top. I have mixed one part isopropanol with nine parts water into a sprayer. With that mix I'm spraying the entire road bed. The purpose is to reduce the water tension so the glue water mix in this bottle. The glue used here is also the same type of wood glue. I use one part glue and three parts water. You see here how the glue water mix is beautifully soaked into the ballast. Once all surfaces have been covered leave this to dry overnight. The easiest way for you guys who do not have an airbrush is to use Tamaya Dark Earth. It's a spray can. Spray richly over the entire track bed and the tracks. There's no need to paint the tracks ahead of assembly if you're using this method. And this is what it looks like. Yeah. I think this ballasting method, even though it's very simple, gives your layout a very sober and elegant look. However, if I have access to an airbrush, I mix airbrush thinner with burnt umber. With this burnt umber I spray most of the track bed on and around the tracks. With that done I also add a portion of black into the brown color. So I get a kind of blackish brown. And this paint I'm using only to spray onto the ties and the tracks. Now the prototype for the ties is really wood and if you look into these tracks they have a lot of 
wood grain details on them. And to enhance those, I dry brush the ties using a light brown color like this. I also like to highlight the rail share and the pin using a rust brown color. This is Cavalry Brown from Vallejo. I mix that with a bit of brown and then I dry brush rail fixings. And it goes kind of fast. You think, oh my God, this takes forever, but it does not. It goes really quick. All right, and this is what my standard ballasted tracks look like. Now there are tons of effects you can add to this. One of them is the acrylic asphalt from MIG. This is a kind of thick acrylic paste. I add streaks of a kind of thick layer of this paste, especially in yards and where you can expect diesels and steamers to have dumped ashes and other stuff onto the tracks. Right, this is what it looks like. With a gray pastel chalk, we can grind off some powder and enhance the look of that ash dump from a steamer a bit further. I'm applying a bit of that gray pastel on top of that asphalt and yeah, something like this. If you want to seal it, airbrush with matte coat. That's matte varnish. When modeling disused sidings, I typically take the corrosion one step further by using a sponge. And with this sponge, I'm applying a bright colored variant of rust which should represent dry rust onto the rail and the rail sides. Once that is in place, I have some, again, pastel chalk, but in a light rust tone. And I just push that into the wet paint. And this is what it looks like when dry. The base material in the next balloting method is clay. This is a air drying type clay, so you don't have to put your entire model radar into the oven, which is a good thing. I don't use my clay so often, so it's a good thing also to have some water and make the clay a bit softer before I start forming it to a long sausage or a worm like this. Then I flatten it out on the table and if necessary I use also a rolling pin to make it really flat. In this case I want it to be kind of thick. I'm aiming to somewhere between 3 or 4 millimeter to fill the gap in between these two tracks. So putting it in place, pushing it into the glue and then push onto the rails. So kind of divides nicely just over the, the rail like this. Yeah. Easiest way to make continuous cobblestone is by using Modelbahn Union roller. So you're just engraving the cobblestone pattern into the clay like this. Let's now also fill the space in between the rails on each of these two tracks. Put some glue onto it so it sticks. And then I put the piece in place. I, for this project, also used the roller I got in this set from Modelbahn Union. And simply just push that into the clay and get a nice looking cobblestone pattern. As you see, this is uh, my harbor version 2.0. Two new blocks and new possibilities for loading goods onto goods cars. 
Next is the asphalt. The asphalt pieces needs to be super thin, as thin as you can make them. There is a bit of an issue or a challenge and that is to get this piece off the table. I use a hobby knife to simply just cut it away from, from the tabletop surface. Then I use wood glue, uh, PVA glue, to glue it in place on top of the cobblestone. I typically select areas which didn't turn out so well with that cobblestone roller for a number of reasons. It's typically that the surface is not totally flat. And then you can put some asphalt on top. This is what it looks like before painting. We'll start the paintwork by painting the asphalt pieces with a kind of general flat gray paint. I keep it rather thick because I will later, once I have this paint in place, sprinkle some grout in the same color. The grout will stick in the paint and make a very nice, perfect surface structure which we can work on later. It will be necessary to paint this once more. All right, now we're done with the first layer of the asphalt pieces. I wanted to try this asphalt I purchased from MIG. This is an asphalt texture. So I try that in a separate space here to see what it will look like when dry and if I like this. Maybe it's a substitute for my clay. Next action is to put a really bright gray paint on the rest. This will really mostly make the grout in between the stones. Here in the edges I intend to have gravel. For the gravel I use chinsilla sand, which is uh, found in Sioux shops. Next up is a wash. This wash contains from brown, that's burnt umber brown, mixed with a bit of olive green and a bit of black, and a lot of water. The purpose with this is to fill also mostly the space between the stones, but also give some variance in the color tone of the individual stones, since these stones are a bit too small to paint individual. It was very hard to spread the MIG asphalt to a smooth layer. We'll see about that later. Now it's instead time to dry brush a brighter gray paint onto the top of the cobblestones. The result after this dark wash was a bit too wild. I want it to be a bit more tidy. The dark wash also discolor the asphalt pieces somewhat in the edges. We want to correct that by painting like this. For this I use acrylic black, brown and white without thinner. Once dry we can now start to weather the dock with track marks and things like that from cars and use. That will put everything together, kind of makes the asphalt marry to the cobblestones. A nice way. It should be subtile, so don't overdo it. I also put some on those asphalt to make them a bit more matte. Yeah, like this. And some track marks here. Now there's only one layer of paint missing, and that is to airbrush some rust on and around the tracks. For this I use the same mix of paint I do with my main lines. That is a mix of burnt umber brown and a portion of black, together with airbrush thinner. Let's now clean the tracks ahead of the static grass. This is a rubber. It's a track cleaning rubber. So I, without touching the environments, just cleaning the rails. So I get that functionality back. Here I want static grass, tufts and small areas of green grass growing. So I'm applying 
This is uh, Noch Grass Glue. It's a bit thinner than the PVA glue and it dries absolutely matte and transparent, which is a must, I think, when you're using it on a, on a concrete or asphalt surface as this is. The gross I'm using here is 2.5 Mido. So it's a kind of, looks very bright green, but that's because the environments are so gray and dull. It's actually kind of autumn green. Next layer is, uh, it's not layer, it's actually tufts of six millimeter yellow beige grass. This should represent dry bushes of grass or dry tufts of grass. We'll see how it turns out. Yeah, like this. So here's our cobblestone with pieces of asphalt. Now, if you're running a three rail system like I do, you will also need to add the center rail. How that is done is explained in the next section. How to add concrete filling between the rails. Next up is uh, concrete. This is uh, concrete filling in between and uh, at the sides of the track. Very nice for a harbor scene like I have it here, but also in maintenance halls and other areas where you can expect this type of arrangement. Start by taking measurements of the length, height and width you need to fill in between the rails and then cut it from 0.4 mm plywood. The standoff that makes up the height of the concrete is made from 1.5 mm balsa sheet. The width of the slice plus 0.4 mm will sum up to the height. It's glued onto the 0.4 mm plywood using wood glue. Fix wood pins until it has dried. To get rid of the wooden surface structure, I blend sand plaster with gray paint and paint the entire surface. Paint several times if necessary. When dry, you glue it in place using wood glue. Check clearance with a car or similar, so it's uh, centered properly and not too wide. I put a steel scale on top just to hold it in place until the glue has set. The ends are bent down and glued in place onto the track bed. Fix it with pins until the glue has cured and add weights if necessary. Now I'm using a three rail system, so we need the third rail also on top of the concrete surface. I have tinned a copper wire. The reason for doing that is because that tin, when it binds oxide, is a better conductor than the tin itself. Iron, copper or silver oxide, for instance, are electrical isolators. The wire is fixed using fast set glue to the plywood. The final touch on this ballast method is given by airbrushing on some rust on and around the tracks. This type of filler can also be transformed into a rusty steel plate filling. It's really easy, it's just to use a sponge, apply a rust color of your liking and then use the sponge to apply that paint over the surface. Once the surface is covered, you add pastel powder to simulate dry rust.
All right, I hope you liked this video about ballasting. If you did, please help others to find this video by giving it a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all about the methods or material presented in the video, post them in the comment field below and I will try to respond to them as soon as possible. If this video helps you with your hobby, please remember that all of this is made possible because a few of you viewers are supporting the channel. So if you want to be one of the good guys, get onto Patreon and set up a support account there. Or make a one-off donation via the PayPal dialog found in the video description below. Hey, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable the little bell and you will get a notification once next video is published. Until that happens, see ya!